you know, human beings just want to know what this means to me. Yeah. How am I relevant in this? How can I help along the way? And if, if you lack that communication and transparency, you know, the immediate default is to become defensive and not engaged. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results, and they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. For the past month, I've been invited presidents and chancellors of higher education institutions as my guests on the show to highlight the incredible work happening to transform communities and the future of education and higher education. Today, we'll hear from one more of our higher education presidents, Dr. Kyle Marrero, who's leading Georgia Southern University. Kyle became Georgia Southern University's 14th president in April of 2019. As president, he leads the Eagle Nation with almost 27,000 students, 3,000 faculty and staff on three campuses. In his short tenure, Georgia Southern has established a new culture of high performance and evidence-based leadership, data-informed decision-making, communication and transparency, and an unwavering focus on a new strategic plan and assessment methodology aligned to five main pillars, student success, teaching and research, inclusive excellence, operational efficiency, effectiveness, and sustainability, and community engagement. Before arriving at Georgia Southern University, Dr. Marrero was president of the University of West Georgia, where the institution achieved record enrollment, graduation rates, degrees conferred, fundraising, and annual economic impact. The institution won the 2015 AASU National Award for Innovation and Excellence. The University System of Georgia selected UWG as the institution and president of the year, and Dr. Marrero has been acknowledged by Georgia Trend as one of the 100 most influential Georgians. Prior to his appointment at West Georgia, he held positions as Vice President for University Advancement at the University of West Florida, Director of the School of Fine Arts and Chair of the Music Department at University of West Florida, and Associate Professor of Voice at Louisiana State University and Artistic Director of the Pensacola Opera. I've known Kyle for quite some time, and I'm so glad that he's with us today. Now, in less than two weeks, President Marrero will deliver one of our keynote presentations at our virtual conference, Destination High Performance Higher Education, on May 17th and 18th. We hope you'll consider joining us at this higher education conference where leaders from around the country will share their success and bring hope to the future of higher education. You can learn more by visiting studereducation.com slash events. Please feel free to register and join us at this event where we highlight some unbelievable accomplishments. So now let's hear from President Marrero's take on transformation in higher education, employee engagement, and what a successful leader will look like in the future. Dr. Marrero, welcome to our show today. It's so glad to to have you with us. Well, thanks. Uh, Happy to be here and and, uh, happy to spend some time with you this morning, Janet. Sounds good. So let's jump in. You know, you and I have had a chance to to have connections over the past years, and you have some wonderful past experiences. And just curious, as we start today, what what are what about the past experiences do you think prepared you for the presidency now at Georgia Southern University? Well, I don't know how far you want me to go back, but uh, <laughs> I'm an unlikely uh, administrator in higher education, uh, particularly at the presidential level. I'm a musician. Uh, my entire life was uh, either as a performing artist, fortunate to tour the world, uh, much of the United States, and then uh, ran arts organizations. And so doing a little bit of everything, you know, our, our urgency was making payroll every Friday and uh, yeah. every way to write grants, do you name it, and then really moving into academia as a professor, but then becoming administrator because of my ability to raise funds, uh, to organize, to do administrative tasks. You know, it, when you do that and you do it well, a couple of times people start saying, hey, you should be, you should think about being, and, and lo and behold, uh, ended up being a president. But specific to, to Georgia Southern, I think for me, it was being already in the university system of Georgia, having been a president at University of West Georgia for six years. And then if I go back one step there, it was really the incredible opportunity to get to know you, 
at West Florida and of course Quint Studer and the whole Studer ideologies around evidence-based leadership, culture, high performance. And then just uh, naive enough or at least enough of a musician willing to take chances and not be afraid of a little bit of failure along the way. When I joined West Georgia, it was to go, okay, what if? What if you could take these ideals and really apply them in a higher ed environment and, and really embrace shared governance for what it means, but also means accountability. It means measuring for success. It means about investing in people. And West Georgia was awesome because it, it gave me that opportunity to try it and, and to learn. And we were really building the plane together in partnership through those six years and, and saw great success. And when I saw Georgia Southern and this opportunity, uh, an institution that consolidated two very different institutions in Georgia Southern and Armstrong, I knew it was an opportunity really in that focus of people knowing that's your greatest driver of success with any organization. Could I be successful someplace else that's larger, more complex, et cetera? And so it was the challenge, the opportunity, the experience I had in the system, uh, both legislatively, both with the Board of Regents and knowing the players. I'd led the comprehensive administrative review for the university system. So I knew all 26 institutions. I knew where efficiencies could be gained based on that study. And so you know, I think it set me up at least to know what I was walking into. How's that? Yeah, that sounds great. And I've had a chance, you know, just recently to get to know more and more of your leaders through the employee engagement rollout process. And I just have been, it's been, it's been delightful, Kyle, you know, just to engage with leaders who, who I think really want to do the right thing for, for the institution. And uh, it's just heartwarming. So uh, you have great opportunity there and done good work to set the foundation. You know, so let's look at let's look at higher ed in general. You know, we've had this thing called this pandemic this past year, and it's caused us to go through some additional transformational changes. But gosh, we were already in disruption prior to the yeah. pandemic. You know, so what do you think are the biggest op- opportunities ahead through transformational times? And then what are some of the obstacles ahead in higher ed? Well, clearly, we've all been looking at this, addressing it. Everyone in higher education leadership has, has known we're on a precipice uh, of relevance. Uh, what is that going to mean in the future? Time to degree, cost of degree, uh, the return on investment of the cost of a degree compared to what then your career goals, objectives, your earning capacity all align and what that means and what experiences have the greatest true connection to success at the end of the day. And, and it is no secret that higher education does not work at the speed of business. It just <laughs> doesn't. And so, you know, uh, I'm always a glass half full person. And so it really propelled that innovation, that urgency. We are forced into it. I mean, think about it. March 13th of 2020, uh, University System of Georgia announced that we'd be finishing the entirety of the semester fully online. For Georgia Southern, that meant over 5,000 courses that were face-to-face. We had two weeks to reopen March 30th to then toggle over and finish the last five weeks of the semester fully online. So, you know, for faculty, for the engagement of students, everything we had to do that forced innovation made us have to be adaptable. There There was no other option. And so for that, that really put into play how can you do it? because we have to do it. So that urgency in there around every way we delivered with technology, the flexible delivery mechanisms, the way we accelerated our opportunity on technical advancement far greater than five or 10 years may have even seen us. And then that continuous improvement through summer, fully online, and then fall with a mix of hybrids and synchronous, asynchronous, every way of delivery that we'd have balked at, that we'd have been fighting through different, uh, uh, you know, meetings and, and, and years of studies to get there. We had to do and not do it well in some cases, and then improve, uh, you know, that whole assess, iterate, fail, continue that process over and over again. And we did that in real time. And I think that was probably some of the most exciting, also terrifying part of what this, this what, what it propelled us. I'd have to say the other part is really our focus on mission. And I think, you know, when people ask, how did you lead through this? How did you, how did you uh, enable uh, your institution faced with social unrest, with, with a once in a generation and a lifetime worldwide pandemic, extreme budget cuts? We had 10.8% budget cut for uh, University System of Georgia into FY21. And what all that would mean and it really made us step back, particularly as leaders, is so what is most important? What is mission? And what are our values? 
and then to lead through those. So it was very clear then, okay, students have to be able to be successful. We have to keep them retaining, progressing, and moving through their curriculum in the most successful way to achieve those learning outcomes. Two, we have to create an environment that follows all the COVID protocols and guidelines for the safest way in which we could have some face-to-face -face mix and some students' opportunities for engagement, et cetera, all with COVID restrictions. And three, we had to be financially viable at the end of the day to make it through. And so we paired those very simplistic alignment of those goals with our overall mission and then really leading from our values. What do we stand for? How do we treat each other through this? So it was all the same things, Janet. It, nothing, yeah. nothing was pushed aside and said, oh, COVID-19, we're going to do this. It was, this is how we do business. This is what we believe in. Now, how do we put that lens of COVID over and make it through? So it really focused us, I think, more so than we have other distractions when you have so many choices, yeah. you know, as opposed yes. to, you know, I just got to get this going and get it through. So what's most important? And then it accelerated and lifted our communication strategies, because if we weren't communicating often, regularly, in every possible mode, uh, you know, I'll average six to eight hours of Zoom meetings a, a day, but I tell you, for three campus environment, 200 miles spread out, you know, 3,300 employees and 27,000 students, it suddenly became these efficient ways to keep everybody in touch, in line, taking input along this way. So hyper communication was uplifted through that. Then the last thing I'll just say, because it's been interesting, is with ACT, SAT not being readily available, the University System of Georgia elected to go GPA only admission criteria for the fall and spring and we'll continue it one more year. So it really gives us a chance to look at that value proposition of what do test scores really tell us about a student's ability to succeed? And so we have an entire test case of freshmen hmm. that come in now matriculating at very close to the same levels to assess. And so you start to wonder what, how important is that SAT yeah. in, in all this admission criteria? And we're, we're a selective institution, not open admission. So anyway, those are some That's of the things that really lifted up and really propelled us. And, and not to I could mention telework and all the flex work mm -hmm. stuff that will all be changing the way we do business from an efficiency sake also. Yeah, I think that is going to be interesting, Kyle, is, you know, we've had to change the entrance looking at how we review students it being admitted. You know, we'll learn from that. We probably had, that's what we will continue to learn from. That is interesting. And, you know, here, um, uh, you just uh, administered and now rolling out the employee engagement survey results. And it was very clear what you were talking about with alignment to values and mission and really communicating that well, that, that it was clear you did that well. You know, that was one of the highest scored categories on the employee engagement survey. So, you know, very clear that you had that outcome. And I know employee engagement and transparent communication both are extremely important to you. Um, so can you speak a little bit about why these two things are, are so important to you and as a leader? Well, look, I, you know, I think when it gets down to it with every relationship you have in your life, whether it's your partner, your spouse, your friends, your family, your coworkers, or as a quote leader, it all gets down to trust. And, and the only way to build trust is through active engagement and communication and ability to be self-reflective and go, you know what, you're right, I'm wrong. This is what we need to do. And, and let's work together for continuous improvement in that. Taking that feedback, I think that's the hardest thing, particularly to leadership levels is we're always uh, supposed to be the smartest person in the room. You know, uh, I always start my meetings. I think when I'm first meeting a, a group coming in, I said, if I'm the smartest person in the room, we are doomed. <laughs> you know, it is the collective intellect and our ability to harness that purposely towards what we have declared are the goals that we want to achieve along that way. And so communication, particularly, let's just go back COVID-19, right? Social unrest, like I've never seen in my adult adult life. And, and you could put a lens over higher education, you know, magnifying and whatever's happening in the world is 10 times more happening on your campus in the ways of that debate of where we are as a society and budget cuts. And, and really, if you can take those as a leader and apply and imply the whole concepts of active, engaged communication, truthful, transparent, even when it isn't good news, but saying we're owning this together, how are we going to get through this together? And then communicate the why around that, of why decisions are made. What will that mean? Because, you know, human beings just want to know what this means to me. Yeah. How am I relevant in this? How can I help? 
along the way. And if, if you lack that communication and transparency, you know, the immediate default is to become defensive and not engaged. And so they go hand in glove. Uh, if you want an engaged coll collegial workplace of employees that, that come every day, uh, giving 100% understanding their importance, their alignment, this is what I do every day. I know what to do every day, why it's so important, because it helps my unit, it helps my department, helps my college, helps my division, helps the institution be successful. They're going to give 100% every day, even in crisis. And, you know, I think the most difficult part of this last year, Janet, is we train all the time for, we, we do tabletop drills for crisis communication, mm -hmm. crisis situations, uh, all the different things that can happen in a campus. No one expected or prepared for one that lasts a year, right. a year and a half, two years in a constant state. I mean, I still meet every, you know, twice a week with my, my sit rep group on COVID-19 and we go through all our performance indicators. This is a continuation of assessment. And so uh, there again, uh, yeah. if, if we haven't said enough, communication is the only way you can lead through this and, and being creative and the effect, most effective ways to align that. Yeah. And I know as a leader, you have prioritized that from the, you know, from the time that I've known you and as you've grown through the years, Kyle, you know, I know that's really important to you. So as we conclude today, you know, thinking about higher education, uh, we accelerated the disruption in the past year, continuing to have to manage change and, you know, looking out maybe five, 10 years, you know, what will that future president or leader look like? Well, you know, there's attributes, I think, that uh, hopefully make any leader successful. It's a hunger, a drive for continuous improvement, ability to be self-reflective, ability to build teams. I think if I've learned anything in, in eight years of being a president now is, is I can't do this by myself. It is the people that you elevate and that you give the opportunity to grow and be successful. It's the old grow yourself. I'm in a constant state of growth, of improvement, but then so that I can then grow others and provide them that same opportunity to develop. And so the better teams you build around that are going to be critical. So it has to be somebody that sees themselves only being a catalyst of the abilities and the development of the teams that they have the honor and privilege of, of serving for the organization. Uh, they have to be clear communicators of that vision of what is most important, the focus of the mission and vision of whatever that organization is and higher education, that's critical. It has to be somebody that understands that, that if you're standing still from an innovation standpoint, you're behind. I mean, you know, that's an old adage, but it couldn't be more true than right now in higher education. And that I think at the end of the day, the most successful leaders in our future will not necessarily come, could come through the hierarchy of higher education. But I think we're really at a precipice where leadership transcends any organizational structure. So it's somebody that has to love people, love the mission of the transformational power of education, believes in it, can articulate its relevance and its importance, but has to be dedicated to the people that are on the front lines every single day. And I like faculty. I mean, I'm a musician. I'm used to contrary every part of every rehearsal of everything you do. And then, you know, because I know it'll be better because of that. And yes. so I, I allow that. I foster that. I want that. And I think leaders that will be the most successful will be able to uh, have those difficult conversations, those dialogues to take that in, take that feedback and continuously improve. So driven, focused, self-reflective and willing to grow others uh, from a team standpoint. What a great list to help uh, those who want to be leaders and presidents and executive leaders or any leader um, at any organization, but higher ed is really going to need leaders like you with those characteristics, Kyle. I am a working progress. <laughs> we all are, Kyle. <laughs> I'm always, every day I wake up, I think about something I need to do for myself. At some point, it'll just be over, I guess. <laughs> yeah. you know, no, but, I, but it's, you know what, that's the fun of it. I mean, that's the, the fun of it is really continuing to, to learn and grow. And I have the great opportunity to work with leaders like you that help me grow as well. So it's, you know, it's been a great partnership. And just wanted to say to you, I've had more of an opportunity to connect with you over the last couple of months as we've worked on the employee engagement survey together and I've just I've enjoyed it so much you know I've enjoyed our connection so thank you and thank you for being with us today thank you friend have a great day
As you can see, Dr. Marrero has a wealth of knowledge and great experience in executive leadership and working with his team to lead now Georgia Th Southern University to achieve excellence in all that they do. Uh, he has a high commitment to continuously improving aspects of the organization to achieve excellence and to become a high-performing model institution in the country. Dr. Marrero is going to be our closing keynote at our higher education conference. His experience and his ability to summarize and wrap his arms around how we apply an evidence-based leadership framework and an improvement process to achieve results will be critical to the summary of our conference and putting the pieces and parts together and connecting the dots for us. Please join us at our higher education conference and hearing more from Dr. Marrero and Georgia Southern University. To, to learn more about our upcoming virtual events, especially our higher education conference, just reach out and connect to studereducation.com slash events. As always, thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Please share the podcast. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.